What's up guys, Jedith here, and I have a big video for you today. We have our first playtest of our Demon Hunter hero talent tree, Aldraki Reaver. So we logged onto the alpha. I saw that Felsgard was here. I got a little excited, and I know you guys probably just got excited too, but I have bad news for you. It is not even implemented yet. It's showing a priest tree and blank talents. Um, it's showing Thrill of the Fight, which is part of the Aldraki Reaver tree. But other than that, it's, it's completely empty, and if you switch to it, you don't get anything. So we still have to wait a little bit for that. Today, we're going to look at Eldraki Reaver. So we have it implemented into the game right now for us to test. I'm going to show you kind of how it works. We're going to go over each individual talent, and there are some findings that I have stumbled into during my testing about each little one, all the little nuances, um, things that are working, things that aren't working, questions that we have, and how I hope this all sort of pans out in the end because it's a little strange. I have some notes that I've taken. I'll put them up on the screen so you can kind of follow along. First thing we're going to look at, what works with Reaver's Glaive and what doesn't. The very first talent at the top of the tree, Art of the Glaive. Consuming three soul fragments allows you to cast Reaver's Glaive. So Reaver's Glaive. Throw a Glaive enhanced with your essence of consumed souls at your target, dealing 3,000 physical damage and ricocheting to three additional targets begins a well-practiced pattern of glaive work, enhancing your next Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. When you use it, you get two buffs. You get one for your Chaos Strike and one for your Blade Dance. They do appear as individual uh, buffs in your buff bar, and then whenever you use the corresponding ability, it uses up that buff. We'll just start there. Let's demonstrate that. So I'll just get a couple Soul Fragments going. Do that. Let's see if we can get one to proc. Okay, we have it lit up here. We're going to use it. Then we have two buffs. We have Glaive Flurry and Rending Strike. So when we use one of them, it uses it up. And then we have the last one. We can use it. And then we get our buffs here. That's essentially how it works. And you can see I've gotten the Reaver's Glaive back again. But we'll get to that. Okay. So what talents actually affect Reaver's Glaive? So the Reaver's Glaive tooltip does update with the talent Bouncing Glaives. So without the talent, Reaver's Glaive only ricochets to two additional targets. With Bouncing Glaives, it adds one, ricochets to uh, three additional targets. So cool. Um, Reaver's Glaive does not work with Furious Throws. So Furious Throws uh, makes Throw Glaive now cost 25 Fury. It does not cost any Fury to cast Reaver's Glaive, even with this talent. And uh, if you have Furious Throws, normally Throw Glaive will duplicate the Glaive that you throw out. So this is what Reaver's Glaive looks like when you use it. Kind of cool, right? But you can notice it didn't throw two there. It was just the one. If I were to use a regular Throw Glaive, then we get two. Reaver's Glaive is not affected by Furious Throws. And we also have this talent, Keen Engagement. So Reaver's Glaive generates 20 Fury. So I thought maybe Reaver's Glaive wasn't using 25 Fury because I had this talent, but I tried it without this talent, tried taking Preemptive Strike instead, so I wasn't actually gaining Fury um, when I used Reaver's Glaive, and it still wasn't using Fury to throw Reaver's Glaive, so it does not work with Furious Throws. Now the next one, uh, on the same choice node, Preemptive Strike. Preemptive Strike does apply to Reaver's Glaive. I'll move my chat window up here and turn on my combat logs right above my camera here. So we're going to throw Reaver's Glaive. And you can see Preemptive Strike did hit the target dummy. The one thing to note about this is that it is physical and it does a very small amount of damage. Of course, PvP dummies, you know, work a little differently. They have some extra armor or whatnot. But yeah, so Preemptive Strike does work with Reaver's Glaive. I'm not 100% sold on this one. I think it's just always going to be better to take the 20 Fury generation but we'll have to see. Okay, and next, Reaver's Glaive does work with Accelerated Blade. So Accelerated Blade, uh, Throw Glaive deals 60% increased damage, reduced by 30% for each previous enemy hit. With Accelerated Blade, when I threw Reaver's Glaive, see in my notes, the three bounces or the three hits that it did over on uh, the three target dummies behind me, it did 2.1k, 1.7k, and 1.3k, and that was with Accelerated Blade. When I took the talent off, it still hit three times, but it did the same amount of damage for each bounce. So 1.321, 1.321, and 1.321. So Reaver's Glaive is affected by Accelerated Blade. The other things, uh, Reaver's Glaive does apply Burning Wound, just like a regular Throw Glaive would. Just like a regular Throw Glaive would, Reaver's Glaive also applies it. Reaver's Glaive does not apply Serrated Glaive. Uh, Reaver's Glaive does not apply Soul Scar, so it doesn't add to your Soul Scar ticking dot 
So it seems like there are some Throwglaive talents that it works with, some that it doesn't work with. And I think the main reason it doesn't work with some of these talents is because you can still use Reaver's Glaive when you don't have any charges of Throwglaive available. So I'll demonstrate that here. So I'm going to use up my charges. Okay, so here I have zero charges of Throwglaive available. If I'm going to scoop this up, I can then use Reaver's Glaive despite having no charges of throw glaive. So I think that's why it doesn't work with things like serrated glaive or soul scar, um, because it would just like increase the potency of those specific talents. That's just my guess. I could be wrong. When you use Reaver's glaive, like I said, you get two buffs. You get one for chaos strike and one for blade dance. Now the blade dance one deals three additional glaive slashes to nearby targets for 15,024 uh, damage. So in the combat log, when that happens, it is called Art of the Glaive. So come over here again. I'll try to uh, get some soul fragments here so I can use Reaver's Glaive. There we go. So I'm going to use Reaver's Glaive. Press Blade Dance. And then if we look in combat log here, Art of the Glaive. So you can see it hit three times per target hit. So very important. It does three extra hits of Blade Dance which are technically Art of the Glaive. It's a separate thing per target hit. So if you go and hit five mobs, you're getting five, 10, 15 slashes. So these ones, Evasive Action and Unhindered Assault, they kind of do exactly what they sound like they do. Uh, this one gives you two charges of VR. I will take that talent just to show you. So press it once, you press it twice. Kind of cool. One question people had with the double VR thing was would the second VR give you a second tactical retreat buff. So, you know, Vengeful Retreat has a five second reduced cooldown and generates 80 fury over uh, 10 seconds. So the answer to that is, unfortunately, no. You do not get an extra buff. It just refreshes the duration of tactical retreat back up to 10 seconds. I don't really see a practical use for it. The only thing I can think of is that each use of VR gives you time on your momentum buff. So it could just be like a comfort thing just to add to the sort of padding of your momentum buff. Uh, the other one we'll demonstrate is Unhindered Assault. So with this one, whenever you use VR, it resets your Fellblade. So we use Fellblade, VR, Fellblade. Um, it's very nice to have that Fellblade back in. So you can always get back in when you VR. But yeah, that's. I think we're probably just always going to use Unhindered Assault. Now, Incisive Blade, when enhanced, Chaos Strike and Soul Cleave, if you play Vengeance, does 30% increased damage. It does exactly what it sounds like it does. Uh, when you press Reaver's Glaive, you have the buff for Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. You press Chaos Strike and it's doing 30% increased damage. Now we have Eldraki Tactics. Now this one is crucial to making this whole thing flow. So the second enhanced ability in a pattern shatters an additional Soul Fragment. So I'll demonstrate that again. Got to build up some Soul Fragments here. So you might be used to, you know, pressing Chaos Strike and seeing a Soul Fragment pop up. But in this case, maybe you would press Blade Dance second in your combo, right? And that would spawn a Soul Fragment. So we'll press Reaver's Glaive, Chaos Strike, and then Blade Dance. And Blade Dance gave us a lesser Soul Fragment. Okay, and now this one is, again, just a defensive that kind of goes with the choice note above it. You can take Army unto oneself. Fellblade surrounds you with a Blade Ward, reducing physical damage taken by 10% for 5 seconds. This one, it's a little questionable. I'm sure there's going to be some uses for it, but the issue with it is that it is a physical damage reduction and not all damage. And then this one, consuming a Soul Fragment also heals you for an additional 15% over time. You're going to be consuming a lot of Soul Fragments with this talent tree, so this is probably going to be insane healing. Okay, and now Wounded Quarry. While Reaver's Mark is on your target, melee attacks have a chance to strike with an additional Glaive Slash for it says zero damage and shatter a soul. What I think this means is that when you press Reaver's Glaive, you press Chaos Strike, it puts Reaver's Mark on the target. From my testing, it looks like your auto attacks are the only things that are able to actually proc this. But when it does proc it, you can see right here. So your melee hit for physical damage and then that proc Wounded Quarry. It did around 2000 damage and it proc a uh, Soul Fragment. Um, this is going to really increase the value of Wind Fury Totem. Now, if it doesn't work like that, if it works a different way, like how I might have in my notes here, um, it could potentially just be a flat percent chance to proc from any sort of like physical melee attack, right? So any attack with a weapon. 
Um, in which case, every slash of blade dance would have a chance to shatter an extra soul. Like I said, the tooltip currently says zero extra damage, but it is doing around 2k, um, and that's physical damage on PvP dummies. Okay, and now we have intent pursuit. This is our hunt cooldown reduction. So let's demonstrate that real quick. Press the hunt, put it on cooldown. And you can see it's just reducing the cooldown on the hunt. And we are getting Reaver's Glaive used often enough that, like, it's pretty substantial when it comes to the CDR on that ability, which is great. Okay, uh, Warblade's Hunger. This one seems to be broken. So consuming a Soul Fragment causes your next Chaos Strike or Shear to deal f an extra 15,000 bonus damage. When I was testing it, Chaos Strike wasn't doing any more or less damage after consuming a soul. So I think this one isn't quite implemented yet. Okay, now the super interesting one, Escalation. Each successive enhanced ability deals 10% increased damage. The effect of the second enhancement is increased by 100%. So I'm gonna press Reaver's Glaive, Chaos Strike into Blade Dance. So what that should do normally when you press Blade Dance, it deals three additional Glaive Slashes to nearby targets, right? But because we have Escalation, and Blade Dance is going to be the second enhancement in the combo, technically that should increase by 100%, meaning it should shoot out uh, six extra Slashes instead of three. So let's demonstrate that. And there we go. We can see we have these Art of the Glaive procs here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So instead of three, we got six because it increased it by 100%. But if we go the other way, if we do Blade Dance first into Chaos Strike, nothing really happens. So what should happen is we should either get a bigger increased damage from Reaver's Mark, making it 30% instead of 15, or... It gives us a longer duration on that buff, taking it from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. So I'll press Reaver's Glaive into Blade Dance into Chaos Strike, and we'll look down here on the target dummy's nameplate here for that debuff. You can see we still only got 5 seconds, and it is still only 15% increase. So for some reason, this talent isn't working on Chaos Strike. And the final talent, Thrill of the Fight. After consuming both enhancements, gain Thrill of the Fight, increasing your attack speed by 15% for 5 seconds, and causing your next ability to deal 30% increased damage and healing after consuming both. So we need to consume Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. I'll do that first to demonstrate what that looks like. So Reaver's Glaive, Chaos Strike, into Blade Dance, and we get both of these buffs. We get the 5 second one for attack speed, and we get 30 seconds for the next ability to deal 30% increased damage. Again, both of these buffs are doing 0% for some reason, but you can see they were two separate buffs when we went Chaos Strike into Blade Dance. Okay, so now if we do Reaver's Glaive into Blade Dance into Chaos Strike, we only get Thrill of the Fight attack speed. Let's try it again. Yep, still only the one buff. We're not getting the increased damage of the next attack. So what it seems like is going on is that Chaos Strike is not hooked up to be the follow-up in the um, combo, essentially. Um, whatever they call it, the pattern. I don't know if that is intended, if they're trying to push you into kind of doing Chaos Strike first into Blade Dance, if they're kind of like, you know, giving you the nudge, being like, hey, this is how you should play it, or if it's actually just not hooked up. Um, I think if they really wanted to kind of like, you know, strong arm you into playing a certain way, it would say that in the tooltips. It would say, use Chaos Strike first into Blade Dance. I think that's probably the going to be the suggested way. I don't think it's supposed to be the only way. I think it's just not hooked up properly right now. And that's why this is happening. Um, and that also explains why Escalation is working the way that it is, or rather isn't working, right? When you use Chaos Strike as the second enhanced ability in the pattern, you're not getting that increase on uh, Reaver's Mark, whether it's the increased damage going from 15 to 30%, or the duration of the buff going from um, five to 10 seconds, neither of those are happening. So with all of that being said, there are a lot of things here that don't work. And I'm not saying it in a way that like, oh, this, you know, this is bad. This just doesn't work. Like it literally, it, it doesn't 
it doesn't work. It's not hooked up. Um, certain things aren't working. They're doing zero damage. The buffs aren't giving the full buff enhancement. Chaos Strike isn't hooked up to be the finisher in the combo. There's also something that is kind of swaying the total impact and the uptime of this entire thing. And you may have noticed it throughout my demonstrations. So we're going to use Sigil of Flame to generate a soul fragment. All right? There's one soul fragment on the ground. I'm going to pick it up. I have two stacks. I need three to get Reaver's Glaive, but picking up one Soul Fragment gave me two stacks. So let's see if we can spawn another one. There we go. So I'm going to pick that up. It gave me Reaver's Glaive, and now I still only have two. Technically, it should have gone to four. If we're getting two per, which I, I don't think is intended in the first place, it should have gone to four. But it stayed at two, and I got access to Reaver's Glaive. I'm going to use it. It consumes both of them. See what I mean? There's something janky going on here. So there's two. We're going to get two. We'll keep going. We'll get more. We're at six now. And the thing is, nothing really happens when you go beyond three. If I were to use these now, I'm at eight. If I were to just press Reaver's Glaive, it's going to consume all eight of these, giving me no extra benefit. It's no different than if I were to use three. There's definitely something odd going on with the amount of stacks you get when you pick up a soul. Um, it's not like that as Vengeance. Vengeance still only gets one uh, one stack per soul fragment they pick up, but for some reason Havoc is getting two. That alone is making the uptime on this pretty big. So I'll just I'll give you a quick demonstration. I'm not going to do the rotation in any like proper or appropriate way, but I'm just going to press some buttons and You'll see how often I have this thing. So there it is. I'm going to press it. We got it again. It's like once you get it rolling, then you're good. Then you're just going to always have it. So I think that sort of that inconsistency in the soul fragment pickups is kind of skewing our our perception of of how this is going to work. But I do think even if that was fixed and maybe we only got one per per pickup, or maybe this is intended. Maybe we're supposed to get two. How is it to play? How does it feel? Right? It's manageable, but I think it it forces people into thinking that there is. A lot of optimization that they should be doing and they, they could be doing they absolutely could be doing that optimization right you can and this will inevitably happen once people get their hands on this is that we'll figure out exactly when we should be using our reavers glaive when we should be using the buffs for chaos strike and blade dance and how we can line it up exactly down to the second so it lines up with essence break and inertia and you can just do big damn it's adding another layer of complication on top of all of that and i think it's getting to the point for a lot of players where it's just too much man it's it's too many layers of little tiny minuscule debuffs or buffs on yourself and you're trying to line them up if you have a weak aura package your aura bar is tracking like seven different buffs and personally i'm over it and that leads me to my next point so for as long as i've played demon hunter which is quite a few years now, there's always been two camps. There's been the, the movement camp and the I-beam, the demonic I-beam kind of no mover build, right? There's, there's two types of people, two types of players. I think that this hero talent tree in particular is catering towards the movement, high skill ceiling enjoyers. That's who this is kind of catering to. And I think even those players might get a little exhausted by this, but what I think could happen is that Felsgard could cater to the opposite camp, the people who like demonic, you know, high demonic uptime. You're not, you know, using movement for damage. You're not lining up all these short little windows. Yes, the cycle of hatred, it is sort of GCD locked and that is a problem in itself. But I think now more than ever, we have the chance to actually take those two camps, balance and tune them in a way where they're actually competitive and sort of, you know, on the same level. And it will actually come down to your preference and your choice instead of being forced into one of them just because, you know, one does technically on paper more damage. And the reason it's going to be different this time is because with two separate talent trees, they're separate, individualized, isolated tuning knobs. Because the problem right now is that both of those playstyles, the movement and the non-movement, they share the same talents. So you make an adjustment for one, it's going to affect the other in a 
either positive or negative way. So it's hard to find that balance. But with two completely separate talent trees, we now have the potential to have isolated tuning knobs where we can make changes to the movement build or the more high skill ceiling build without ultimately affecting this other one and vice versa. We can make adjustments to the demonic build without pushing the movement build higher and higher up. And that's exactly why it's been such a hard thing to do in terms of balancing um, up until now, because they're connected. We have the same tuning knobs for both playstyles. So we'll have to wait and see what Felsgard looks like, but even just reading the, the sort of text here, embrace your inner demon and amplify the explosive power of the Felfire you wield, kind of sounds like that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be more demonic based. And um, I do think that this is the best opportunity for them to, to make that happen and have the two playstyles be independent of each other. So you can cater to both types of players. Now, just coming back to Eldraki Reaver. Again, this isn't something that we can really give a rotation for just yet because so much of it isn't working. And there's going to be a lot of sims that start happening once this alpha build is you know, released to the public and, and people can get into the spell data and figure everything out. I think there is sort of an underlying intended play style with this. Personally, I think it's going to be, you know, using Chaos Strike to apply Reaver's Mark. Um, Reaver's Mark makes the target take 15% increased damage for five seconds. Then you would use a, a big Blade Dance inside of that to get the 15% onto Blade Dance. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it's meant to work. I think you do have the freedom to go the other way, but something's telling me it's it's supposed to be, you know, Chaos Strike into Blade Dance. So which one are you guys sort of leaning towards? Do you guys like the Eldraki Reaver? Are you excited for it? Are you looking forward to seeing what Felsgard is? Do you want to play more of a simple demonic build? Is that something you're kind of craving at this point? I know I certainly am. I'm a little exhausted by the whole like momentum inertia, high movement, vengeful retreat sort of thing. I'm tired. My hands are tired. My brain's tired. I kind of just want to like go low effort just for a little bit, you know, call me a noob, call me a boomer, whatever. I don't care. I'm over it. I just want to blast. If you want to see some more The War Within coverage, I have a ton of videos coming out. Um, there may even be some posted on my channel right now. So go check it out. Make sure you like the video. Give this channel a sub. We are super close to 30,000 subs. I'm trying to get 30,000 before or within launches in just a couple months, and we are super close. So if you could help me out, give the channel a sub. I would greatly appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.